Would Brian Kelly bench Garrett Nussmeyer? He was asked that question. You'll hear his answer next. Locked on LSU. Let's go. You are locked on LSU, your daily podcast on the LSU Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Okay, let's get it. It is Locked On LSU, your team every day. I'm your host, Matt Moscona. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. We are free, available wherever you get podcasts. Of course, on YouTube as well, so please subscribe. And if you're on YouTube, please smash that like button. And as always, one of the fastest ways to help us grow is to leave your comments below. Billy Napier updates DJ Lagway's injury on Wednesday. We'll let you hear what the Florida coach had to say. But Brian Kelly was also asked a question that many people have wondered over the last, I hate to even say two games, really over the last five and a half quarter, uh, quarters. As the turnovers have come for Garrett Nussmeyer, uh, many LSU fans have looked longingly to the bench. I'm not saying that's the right decision in any way, but Brian Kelly was asked the question Wednesday on the SEC Coaches Teleconference by the Advocates Wilson Alexander. With Garrett Nussmeyer lately, the interceptions and turnovers, is there any consideration being made to a quarterback change? No, absolutely none. He gives us the best chance to be successful. And, you know, that's kind of where we're at relative to first or second. We have to do a better job for him. He's got to do a better job. And we believe in him. And we believe that as we continue to grow in the first year of a starter, that he gives us the best chance to be successful. Brian Kelly is 100% right. I know a lot of people have looked to the sideline and said, man, if Nuss keeps turning the ball over, should you bench him? Is it time to play the backup? The answer is unequivocally no. It's not even close. Now, let me first lay this out, okay? The backup is Ricky Collins. Ricky Collins is a redshirt freshman. On the season, Ricky Collins has attempted five passes. Now, he's completed all five of them with a long of 12 yards. He's also run four times for 18 yards with a long of 11. Mop-up duty for Ricky Collins. Why in the world, why in the world, with everything on the line for your season, would you be on the road in Gainesville against a struggling Florida team, but a Florida team, might I remind you, that played Georgia to a tie ball game with about five minutes to go a couple of weeks ago down in Jacksonville. Why in the world would you run the risk of sending a red shirt freshman quarterback who has never started and never taking a meaningful snap in his career to try to go save your season? That is stupid. There is no other way around it. Let me also put some context around Nussmeyer who right now is sitting at 2,866 yards. If the season ended today, Garrett Nussmeyer's season today through nine games will be the seventh greatest passing season in LSU history, just ahead of Matt Mock's 2003 season when LSU won the national championship. Garrett Nussmeyer, as he is pacing, should finish behind only Joe Burrow's 2019 season where he threw for 5,600 yards in 15 games and Jaden Daniels a year ago who threw for 3,800 yards. Nussmeyer is trending to pass Zach Mettenberger's 3,000-yard season in 2013 and Rohan Davies' amazing 2001 season. So... He's also got 21 touchdowns. Might I also remind you that five and a half quarters ago, LSU had won six straight games. They had blown out, or they had beaten Ole Miss. They had blown out Arkansas, and they were up double digits on the road against Texas A&M in a battle of the only unbeaten teams in the conference. And a giant part of that, as LSU's head coach said, is that you're asking Garrett Nussmeyer to, quote, stand on his head. You have no running game to speak of. It's been disappointing in that respect from your offensive line. 
your true game-breaking deep threat receiver has been hurt all year. The reason you are even in the position you are in is because Garrett Nussmeyer has been otherworldly good this year, so much so that you look at mock drafts, and he is littered in the first round of these mock drafts. He's played himself into that perspe- uh, into that projection. It's not been great the last two games. I understand that fully. The turnovers are a problem, and if you go to Gainesville and turn the ball over, you're going to lose. But why in the world would you trust a redshirt freshman who's never taken a meaningful snap to go try to win you a game in Gainesville? That doesn't make a lick of sense whatsoever. So, no, you're not going to bench Garrett Nussmeyer. You shouldn't bench Garrett Nussmeyer. And anyone who suggests you might even consider benching Garrett Nussmeyer needs to have their head examined. Because he's a veteran player. You've ridden with him all, all season long. He knows the offense. The coaches trust him. And he's made plays for you all year. He's got to clean up the turnovers. That is undeniable. He's got to clean up the turnovers. So work with Garrett Nussmeyer on cleaning up the turnovers instead of turning over the offense to a brand new quarterback. Let me remind you what just happened in Oklahoma where they had a quarterback there who led him to a 10-win season. And they decided, you know what? We're going to go with the talented young guy, Jackson Arnold. What happened? That quarterback, they booted Dylan Gabriel as the Heisman frontrunner for the number one team in the country up in Eugene, Oregon. And the the redshirt freshman, former five-star phenom, got benched. And he's starting again because neither of the young guys are any good. No, you ride with your veteran. So how do you coach these interceptions out of a young player? Here's Brian Kelly. If we're not seeing things the way we need to, then we're doing too much, right? It's always been my experience in 30 plus years of coaching that if it's not resonating, then you need to do less. Less is more, all right? Then there's always, there's a place to start. It's not the interception. It's where are we starting? And generally it's, it's the basics. It's the fundamentals. So I think in, in everything in life, we go back to the fundamentals. And so, you know, can we make things easier from a coaching standpoint that allows us to be consciously competent to the level of, you know, an unconscious competent where I don't even have to think about it. I know it so well. I mean, that's where we want to get to. Florida is also 93rd in the country in pass defense. You should. Should have a lot of success throwing the football against that defense on Saturday in the Swamp. Garrett Nussmeyer goes and protects the football like he's done for a chunk of this season. You should go have a lot of success against the Gators. Now, the other big question is, who's going to be under center for the Gators? We got a DJ Lagway injury update. We'll get to that next Locked on LSU, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Maybe you're heading to Gainesville. You want to be in that number to cheer on the Tigers. The best ticketing app that I know of is Game Time. So make sure you download that Game Time app. I love the all-in pricing. It's a feature I tell you about all the time. You got to turn that feature on. When you toggle over, it'll show you the price up front so you don't have any surprise fees at checkout. Game Time is the only ticketing app also that gives you peace of mind with your purchase. You can filter only incredible deals on great seats with game time picks. You can see the view from your seat on your phone before you buy. I mentioned the all-in pricing, and you can buy tickets in just seconds with two taps. It's right there on game time. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time picks. Download the game time app, create an account, use the code locked on college for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem with the code. L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-C-O-L-L-E-G-E for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? It's game time. Today's show is also brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That's at FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. 
So Garrett Nussmeyer is going to be LSU starter, as he should. The bigger question for Saturday's game with LSU in Florida is who is going to be under center for the Gators? Two weeks ago, when Florida played Georgia, DJ Lagway, the five-star freshman phenom, the number one quarterback in the country, who was replacing the injured Graham Mertz, uh, Lagway was carted off after a very serious hamstring injury. Earlier this week, we played for you comments from Lagway's mother on a podcast where she said she was shocked that he even dressed uh, for the game against Florida. Very likely that was a situation where Lagway, who's from Florida, or excuse me, Texas, who's from Texas, wanted to dress for Florida against his home state school with a lot of friends and family uh, in attendance at that game at uh, Daryl K. Royal Memorial Stadium in Austin. So I think, personal opinion, it is highly unlikely that we see DJ Lagway play against LSU. But Billy Napier had an update Wednesday morning on the SEC coaches teleconference. DJ continues to improve. You know, I, mean, I think we've seen progress every day. Uh, and I think that's allowed him to participate more in practice. Uh, obviously, we're kind of controlling that environment. But in general, I think we continue to trend in the right direction. Trending in the right direction, which makes sense. Every day, you're going to get better. Now, he is officially on the participation report listed as questionable for the game Saturday against LSU. Listen, you don't have to be an orthopedist or any type of physician to know. You watch sports or if you've had an, a soft tissue injury, you know that what DJ Lagway went through less than two weeks ago, it'll have been 14 days by the time LSU and Florida kick it off from the swamp. You don't come back from that in two weeks. Not to be 100% full speed, with a hamstring injury like that, where you have to be carted off the field. It wasn't a tweak, as it was a strain. He was carted off the field. That injury was so severe. So, do we really believe he's going to be ready to go f or full, ready to go full speed or anything close to it against LSU? That's unlikely. Now, Billy Napier did give an update also on the growth he's seen from his freshman quarterback from the start of the season, where he was playing a platoon role and a backup role to Graham Mertz to where now he's the starter when healthy. I think DJ gets better every day. He's obviously gained some confidence. The more weeks that he prepares, the more reps uh, that he gets, the more experience he gets. And then certainly, you know, he's just learning more what it's like out there. You know, I think when you're a young player and you haven't played a lot, there's some uncertainty about what the games will be like, right? So now that he knows, he's learned the value of preparation. He's learned the value of practice habits. And then obviously he's navigating what it's like to work your way through injuries at this point. So all these things are good for him. You know, he'll continue to get better and it's also worth noting that Lagway, while he is a, a physically incredibly gifted player, uh, six foot three, 239 pounds, he was a five star, the number one quarterback in the country, and has tremendous upside. And I think he's going to have a fantastic college career. Even when he's been on the field for Florida this year, he hasn't been great. Uh, he's completing right at 60% of his passes, six touchdowns, five interceptions. Five interceptions in just 92 attempts. His best game was the game against Kentucky when Florida won that one 48 to 20. Lagway was 7 of 14, just 14 passing attempts, 7 of 14 for 259, and he ran it nine times for 46 yards for an average of five yards per carry. That was his best day. They did hit a big 58 yarder in that game, which kind of tilted his, uh, his passing statistics. The bottom line is, though, the Georgia game before his injury, he was two of six for 47 yards. He carried four times for 18 yards. It just hasn't been great for Lagway, even when he has played. Now, it, he, gained, he got a lot of people's attention because after Florida lost to Miami, uh, he got a bulk of the playing time against Samford in the second week, and they won 45-7. to seven. Now, again, this is an FCS school. And he was 18 of 25 for 456 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. He had a long of 85. He also ran it five times for 16 yards. Florida outclassed Samford and Lagway had a big day. But once he started playing against conference opponents, even just one week later against Texas A&M, where they lost 33 to 20, he was just 6 of 13 for 54 yards, a touchdown and two interceptions. He ran four times for negative 20 yards. He came crashing back to earth once he played SEC competition, and that has been more the norm throughout conference play. So even if Lagway does play, even with 
the issues LSU's had defensively. A 70% DJ Lagway is nothing remotely close to what LSU saw with Marcel Reed coming off the bench and what they saw with Jalen Milrow a week ago in Tiger Stadium. Paris Shan met with reporters this week, the LSU defensive lineman, and was asked specifically about DJ Lagway. I mean, we're preparing to just do our jobs. Uh, we have a good game plan with Coach Baker. So just doing your job, being disciplined in the gaps. Uh, as long as we do what we're supposed to do, we can, we can hold anybody, I think. As long as we do what we're supposed to do, we can hold anybody. Well, it hasn't worked the last two times out against running quarterbacks. We'll see if the Tigers even face DJ Lagway. And if they do, how they're able to hold up. If it is, um, if Lagway is unable to play for Florida and we end up seeing uh, the backup quarterback, Aiden Warner, um, that will be a very negative situation for the Gators. Uh, Warner is not a runner. Uh, he would be a sitting duck against a ferocious LSU pass rush. And Florida also could very well be without Damian George, their starting right guard in this game again. So or will be, excuse me, without Damian George in this game. So you are looking at um, a very favorable matchup for the LSU defense, more like what they saw with Connor Wegman uh, than what they saw with, say, Marcel Reed, if, in fact, it is Aiden Warner going for the Florida Gators. But we will find out as we get closer to kickoff Saturday, 2.30 Central with LSU and Florida. Then do it for a little bonus content here on Locked on LSU. And thanks so much. If you are on, uh, if you're listening, thanks for subscribing on your favorite podcast app. Please rate us and leave a review. If you're on YouTube, please smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell so you're notified whenever we post a new video. And please be sure to let a friend know if they love the Tigers. We got you here every single day for Locked on LSU, your team every day.